when you replace it, are you going to make sure that people with preconditions are still covered? Yes, because it happens to be one of the strongest assets. You're going to keep that. Also, with the children living with their parents for an extended period, we're going to. You're going to keep very that. much try and keep that. Adds cost, but it's very much something we're going to try and keep. That's President-elect Trump speaking to 60 Minutes, which airs tomorrow on CBS in his first TV interview since his big campaign victory for the White House, letting the public know that he is open to keeping some aspects of Obamacare intact when he and his team come up with their plans for new initiatives for affordable health care in America. Health care is among the top three priorities on his domestic agenda that Mr. Trump says he plans to tackle in the first 100 days. His administration. Joining us now, Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert, who's here to tell us more about how Congress plans to work with Mr. Trump and the aggressive domestic agenda that he has ahead. Welcome, Congressman. Good to see you. Great to be with you, Emma. Thank you. You know, this week, Mr. Trump, in his meeting with leaders on Capitol Hill, said that health care, immigration, and job creation are going to dominate the domestic agenda as soon as he's, as he's sworn in. When it comes to health care, do you expect some dramatic changes as he throws out most of Obamacare and ushers in a new plan? Do you have any specifics? <laughs> Those are the uh, the things that Americans have been praying for, hoping for, and that is those dramatic changes. But Uma, in support of what President-elect Trump has said, uh, if you go back to 2009, before Obamacare was even drafted, you have Republicans like me, others all across the Republican Party, House and Senate, saying, look, there are things we can work on together to fix health care. And one of them is, you know, there, there have been people that have been harmed by insurance companies using pre-existing conditions as a reason to fraudulently prevent someone from continuing on their, their insurance. That's got to stop. Let's work together on that. And by the way, there were many of us Republicans that felt like, look, if you're, no matter what your age is, if you're still living with your parents and you're dependent on them, well, of course you ought to be able to be on their insurance. But the Democrats said, no, nope, we don't want your input. Henry Waxman said, we don't want your input. We don't need your vote. So forget it. We'll do it what we want. So that was something Republicans were willing to do way back then. And now Trump is actually just affirming what Republicans were willing to do back then. And let me also uh, affirm something my friend Tony Schaefer said. There are all kinds of rumors about who's going to get what position. And just keep in mind when that normally, normally when that happens, uh, there are a lot of people that have pushed their own name out there in hopes that they'll be considered and said they are being considered. But uh, as the old saying in Washington goes, no matter how cynical you get, it's never enough to catch up. But when it comes to the wall and immigration, look, uh, we, we appropriated over four billion dollars for just one part of a vir virtual wall that that uh, Janet Napolitano did not spend. She and if if somebody spent that that money, they violated the law, and that'd be so one you're, of those so you're great saying places that to the have... funds to build the wall have already been appropriated, so that if Mexico yes. refuses to pay for the wall, uh, the money's already been built in for us to spend it. Well, I'm not giving up on Mexico uh, paying for the wall, and Trump never said when they would pay for it. We may have to front the money up front, uh, like I say, so much of it's already been put out there, and then uh, go collecting later. That happens in the business world, as uh, President-elect Trump knows. But I'm saying we should start, and if that money got misspent illegally, then uh, we need to find it. That would be one of those great places uh, under the law for a government employee to point out where it was illegally spent, and then we give them 10 percent or so of uh, what we get back from where it was illegally spent. So money is either there or it's grabbable to start the wall. We've been trying to push for this even under President Bush. The money was appropriated back then and during the Obama administration. They just didn't spend it the way we told them to. What do you think about the working relationship between um, the Republicans who were on board with Trump and those who did not support him? How do you see this relationship going forward as he tries to make sure his domestic agenda is carried you know, forward that, and that specifically on the, on the immigration issue? That, well, such a superb question, Uma. And, and the thing is, 
Uh, we have got to sound the alarm loud and clear, and I am getting it out there now to start, and hopefully it will be a, a campaign that will be strong enough to prevent what I'm afraid may happen, what's happened in the past. I saw it in 05 and 06. We were going to reform Social Security. We were going to totally reform, throw out the Internal Revenue Code, start fresh. And our leadership at that time said, you know what, um, this could be a term where we lose the majority, so let's don't do anything. And I'm telling you, that could happen here. They get on board at first. The establishment people in the House and Senate say, yeah, we're going to do these things. And then they come back later, and McConnell says, well, you know, we were going to do all this good stuff, but cloture just uh, stopped us. It's time to use the Reed rule, set aside cloture with 51 votes, and save America before it's too late. That has to be well, done. Well, that's what frustrated voters in the past, in past elections, when the Republicans who were voted in and promised to do all kinds of things, working with exactly. the administration and made those promises, and then they didn't. Uh, voters were very that's exactly angry. exactly right, and, and that's why we... You got the Tea Party folks yeah. angry mad, and that's why a lot of folks were thrown out. This is our last chance. We can't have excuses like cloture keep us from following the Constitution and saving this little experiment in government called a republic. We have got to do this for the sake of the next generations. We've been given a reprieve. We need to take it with all the, the vitality we can and drive this agenda that Trump was elected on home. He has a mandate on the things he was elected on, uh, and, and I know that some people say, well, he didn't win the popular vote. My gosh, look at the map. Look at every county in America that voted for Trump, and then tell me that wasn't a mandate. Uh, we are not going to have the huge urban centers dictate the failed policies that have driven these cities into bankruptcy. It's time to get back to what made America great that you find in 90 percent of the geography of America. All right, Congressman. Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. All the best it's to great you to be with as you. you guys move forward. Well, God bless and you. Hopefully you God get the business America. of the people's Thank business you. done. Thank you.